Okay, so we had a look at the simple interest formula. So for simple interest, we had this formula F is equal to P1 plus I N. Okay, that's where we got to. How about the compound interest formula? Compound interest. Okay, in other words, now in compound interest, you might recall, my interest is also earning interest. That's what it boils down to. So if I had a timeline, there's my timeline, and if I had a thousand rand in here at time zero, after one year, I will earn 10% interest so let's say at 10% interest just to make it easy okay compound interest so the hundred rand I get by saying we take this multiplied by 10% gives me 100 rand now I have 1100 rand after another year so in my second year I am not going to work out 10% on the original 100 rand I would do that for simple interest. No, I'm going to work out 10% on my 1,100 Rand. 10% on that is 110 Rand. Okay, do you see it's 100 Rand plus another 10 Rand? Okay, so it's 10% on the 1,000. That's the 100 Rand. Let me use a color to in illustrate. So on the thousand rand I earned 10% interest and the interest I earned the year before the hundred rand 10% of a hundred rand is 10 rand so my interest is also earning interest okay so that now I've got 2000 sorry not 2000 1200 uh, and 10 Rand. In the next year, you'll see the same thing again. How much interest have I earned so far? 210 Rand. So I'll earn 100 Rand on the original 1000 Rand, and then on the 210 that I earned interest on, or that is my interest, I'll earn more interest on that. 10% of that is plus 21. So my interest in the third year will be 121 Rand so that now I'll have 1,331 Rand. Okay, do you see how my interest is increasing over time? So my growth is not constant but my growth rate of 10% stayed constant. Cool, let's look at a formula for this whole business. Okay, so this is quite a challenge to get a formula for this. So you need to concentrate very carefully. So imagine I have, I'm investing P, but I'm going to use P's a lot. So let's call this P0. So when no time has elapsed, in other words, right in the beginning, I've got no money in there. Uh, sorry, not no money. I've got uh, uh, my initial investment, P0. Now, after one year, I have, I earn interest on this. So, I have I times P0 plus my original P0. Okay, my original amount plus my interest that I earned for that year. And now, just to simplify it, I'm going to take out P0 as a common factor and I see I've got 1 plus I. This is now my new amount that I have in the bank. So let's call this one P1. Okay, so in my second year, I'm earning interest, okay, but not on my original amount, but my new amount, the P1. And what did I have in the beginning of the second year? I still had P1 in there. This is how much I had in the beginning of the year. That's the amount of interest I earned for the year. So that now I have, and if I take out um, P1 as a common factor, I've got 1 plus I. Okay, but look at P1. P1 is equal to P0 times 1 plus I. So this is actually, if I replace P1 with P1, 
1 plus sorry p0 plus i okay multiplied by 1 plus i then I see okay then I have p0 1 plus i squared and this is how much I have at the end of my second year so let's call it p2 so in my third year at the end of my third year I'll get interest for that year on the amount that I had the year before in other words P2 and I'll still have P2 in my bank account plus the interest so now I have P2 taken out as a common factor 1 plus I but look here here's a formula for P2 let me do a different color here's a formula for P2 well, it's not that different is it okay here we go a formula for P2 so instead of writing P2 I'm gonna write P0 which was my original amount 1 plus I squared 1 plus I squared that's P2 and that whole thing gets multiplied with 1 plus I again 1 plus I again and this now gives me P0 1 plus I to the power of not twice but three times three times and hopefully you can see what's happening here okay so at the end of this was P P3 okay so what will PN be in other words at the end of n years at the end of n years do you notice I take my original amount P0 multiplied by 1 plus i sorry not 1 plus 3 1 plus i by the number of years that has passed or actually the number of times I got interest okay and just instead so that's what how much I will have in the bank after n years but just instead of using that notation I'm just going to use future value the future value of my savings will be my present value of my savings multiplied with this rate to 1 plus i n times and there we go that is where the formula comes from and obviously we've uh, only showed you kind of we call this inductive reasoning Okay, so um, just showing you more or less the pattern and from that pattern we got this formula. This is the formula for compound growth. Cool. I hope you're happy. If you're not, go look at it again. You'll get it. Just try harder this time. Okay, see you in the next video where we are going to look at some examples.